Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. I'm still talking about business continuity management and in this video, we're gonna talk about doing an exercise, a simulation, a walkthrough, tabletop, whatever that is to simulate an event or a crisis event so that we can look at our plan and confirm, or plans, we can have more than one, and confirm that they're a good, they're doable, we have everything we need, everybody knows their role, stuff like that. So it's typical rehearsal to make sure you're ready in the event of the real deal or something really happening. So I'm gonna start again in the business continuity workspace and I have a quick action up here for start an exercise. We'll do the report a crisis event in a future video. But when we start an exercise, we get to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this a demo exercise and I'm going to leave it assigned to me just to make sure I see all the buttons and stuff that I need and notice we have those four options simulation tabletop walkthrough and functional if you're trying to repeat what I'm showing here make sure you choose functional on the following screens it may show or hide different things depending on the type of exercise you see here you could check the ServiceNow documentation if you're curious what the differences are I'm gonna pick a date for this to start and it will be on the today the 9th um, you won't see this on the 9th, but uh, I am recording it on the 9th of August of 2022. Um, and I'll just go ahead and put a demo for the world to confirm our plans are sufficient. And we're going to make sure our plans actually work. So go ahead and submit that. And it brings me to the event or exercise event screen where I got a couple of things going on. Um, first of all, for the event itself, it took basically everything I did and put it over here on the left hand side, adding a different a state here. So when we talk states for an event, we're going to go through a couple of things. One, we're going to start the event, and then once we start the event, we're going to submit it for approval afterwards. And what we're submitting for approval, if you look down here on the right hand or left hand side, um, actually it's not even showing up yet, it'll be the results. So we're going to specify some result approvers, and I'm going to use them myself again. We're going to set some plan approvers, use myself again. And when we submit this event after we've started it, done our exercise, our walkthrough, it's going to be submitted for somebody to review and approve and confirm, yeah, that was a good exercise, everything's good. And maybe they'll create a task to update the plan um, or update something else, update some kind of procedure. So, so that's what the state's going, what the what's going on with the state there. Um, we're going to come down here to goals. So our goal for this particular demo is to show everyone an exercise. Um, and then the objectives are to, uh, in this case, if we're doing an exercise, is confirm plans are accurate, sufficient, whatever, right? So that's really the goal is we want to walk through and make sure this is all working as it should. I'll go ahead and save that and that'll save all my details there. Now for impacts. This is where you're gonna add either your assets or a plan. Um, most of the time, there's gonna be an asset associated with it. I've got two pulled up here um, at the top just to show you kind of how these things relate to each other. So it should connect some dots for you. So let's go over to the human resources plan. If you watch the video, one of the things we did when we made a plan is we added things to scope and that's what's the, where these business processes over here. And notice they have their RTO and RPO associated with them. I'm going to use this accounts payable business process as something that's been impacted for our exercise. Now, if you did watch the video, you know that I actually made my own continuity plan and did the same thing. I have the business process accounts payable. So when I add this particular asset to my exercise, I'm going to use this add assets button right here. Um, when I do this, it is going to ask me for the thing of the, the type of thing that was impacted, right? So you can see here, we've got some CSDM type uh, groupings. I'm going to choose business processes and click next. And then we're going to select accounts payable, right? Accounts payable was the one that you just saw was in both of those plans. And here's where the magic happens. Um, once I add that asset to this event, um, and this will apply to, it, uh, to an exercise or an event. I said event, I meant exercise. If I add plans to it now, I can say, show me the plans for that asset. Pick the asset that I'm talking about because there could be more than one. I'll click on next. And notice I have two plans, the ones I just showed you, the demo continuity plan and the HR business continuity plan. I'm gonna select both of them. And that means you can have more than one plan 
associated with a particular asset. So if I come in here and see, now I've got the human resources, business continuity, and the demo continuity, and they're both uh, pending. They're not, haven't been recovered yet. So I'm gonna save this. We've done all our planning, and I'm gonna start the event. So I have the event is happening, we're doing our exercise, whether that's a walkthrough, a simulation, tabletop exercise even. If I go over to event tasks, notice I've got my plan for demo continuity and all the tasks that were associated with it. For any of these plans, when they're sitting in this event task, I can go ahead and add ad hoc tasks. So if it's just something unique um, to that particular event or you thought of something, it could be a potential to update the plan, ServiceNow gives you the ability to add something ad hoc that you need to do on the fly and it gives you all the field you'd expect to add there, right? So you're not stuck with just the tasks that were in your plan. If I switch to human resources business continuity plan, it's pretty much the same task because I copied that, but I had one extra one here for demo task. So that wasn't in the other, the demo continuity plan. You'll see it disappears. So extra task there, and these are gonna combine into a view of our exercise of all the tasks that need to be done. So I've got all of them in order who, what the state is, impacted, who it's assigned to, uh, you can go in and change these assignments, and then we can you know, work with these tasks as we move through the exercise and simulate what it would be like to complete the initial damage assessment, identify the appropriate loss scenario and recover strategy, for example. And notice this particular task has all kinds of things associated with it um, for that particular event. So we'll go back to the details here. The last thing that um, I really wanna show in this demonstration is if you have something like Everbridge integrated with ServiceNow, that's an out of the box integration that's supported, requires a, requires a separate subscription to Everbridge, of course, but with that subscription, and once they're connected, you can actually send notifications from the ServiceNow platform. So you can add a description, um, use a template. If there's a template out there, I don't think I have any templates. Let's see here, no templates. Um, so no, no templates, but could a description pick who we're actually gonna send this to. So they could be contacts um, or it could be contact groups if we had them configured. We could say whether or not they want it, need to be acknowledged. So in Everbridge, you can actually you know, request that people acknowledge and they'll sit there and run through all their contact information until it finds one where they acknowledge. Helpful, helpful feature there, depending on what, what mode of communication people are on. And then subject, body, footnote, and SMS text equivalent if we're using text as a format for sending that message. Once we're done, we can save it or we can send it, as you see there up at the top above my head, and simulate the actual exercise for this particular event that's impacting the accounts payable department and the two plans we have in place for that accounts payable department. So you've just seen the basics of what an exercise is. What you haven't seen is the 12 people in a room sitting there running through the exercise. That's an important component of this process is really important. You wouldn't do this in a silo. You're gonna be working with different teams, different departments to restore services. And doing these exercises is your way of guaranteeing that when the real deal happens or something unfortunate happens, that everybody's done this before. They know all the steps they need to take. They have a great interface and service now in order to interact with and complete all the steps to do that recovery. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in business continuity management. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.